All right. Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Tonight is Wednesday, September 1st, 2021. This is your evening tropical update. Well, we have a new month on our hands and a lot to talk about as we look at the remnants of Ida moving through New England and the mid-Atlantic region today where significant weather was uh, occurring throughout the afternoon and will continue through the evening hours. We also have the remnants of Tropical Depression Kate now dissipated as of 5 p.m. We have a very quickly strengthening Larry, now almost a hurricane off the coast of Africa, and we have a system in the Caribbean Sea to watch for the next several days. So no immediate threats in the short term, but a couple things to hit on. We'll go ahead and start with Ida and uh, the leftovers of and still significant weather undergoing tonight or underway this evening, uh, now spreading into parts of New York, New Jersey, and then Connecticut, Rhode Island, etc. And still some strong thunderstorms back along the Delmarva region. And this was a significant weather event. A lot of heavy rain fell across Pennsylvania and other areas today. Widespread four to eight inch rainfall totals. There was at least one flash flood emergency in southern Pennsylvania. And also two, at least two strong tornadoes. One to the east of Philadelphia. It was a large wedge tornado. Saw it on Twitter. It was very, um, very strong, very large for this region. And another strong tornado occurred, I believe, near Annapolis in Maryland. Uh, so two at least tornadoes. It was confirmed along with several others. It wasn't the only two, but there was two notably strong, particularly dangerous situations for a tornado warning. So unfortunately, the forecast for a regional tornado outbreak and a severe flooding event were pretty well established and did occur. And again, all that kind of weather does move into New England tonight before this moves offshore. The tornado threat probably diminishes some as your uh, highest tornado threat is probably like in this slice of the system and not much land left with that. But it is still significant, and uh, please keep an eye on forecasts and conditions throughout the evening. Thankfully, a couple days of dry weather is moving in behind all this mess moving offshore. Look at the rest of your map. As we talked about, Kate, no longer a system, a remnant low dissipated as of 5 p.m. So funeral bagpipes for Kate, pour one out. And we turn our attention to relevant storms. And that one is, of course, Tropical Storm Larry, 5 p.m. from the National Hurricane Center. Maximum stain winds up to 70 miles an hour tonight. And that movement to the west at 22 miles an hour. No significant changes to the Hurricane Center's forecast cone, although they have upgraded this to a major hurricane expectation in a couple days. Um, Larry is the 12th named storm of the season and this is one of the only five other seasons which is 95 05 11 12 and 20 that have had this many named storms by this point in the season uh, thanks to philip klotzbach on twitter colorado state university hurricane specialist for that information and uh, he's got a bunch of little factoids on his twitter it's really cool but uh, definitely 2021 is pushing a hyperactive pace and larry is only going to add to that with its accumulated cyclone energy and other things like that but um, hopefully no threat to us. That's what we're still tracking this evening. You look at the satellite presentation of Larry. Pretty, pretty damn impressive. I'll, I'll say that. Now, the last couple of hours, some dry air looks like it worked into uh, the core of the storm and collapsed it. But it had a full eye feature. I, I can't tell you many tropical storms I've seen with an eye, a clear eye for several hours. That's, that's some impressive stuff. This was probably a hurricane already. It underwent some pretty rapid intensification today when we're looking at these storms this far away we don't have recon we don't have a lot of ace scat passes and stuff so it's like it's kind of subjective you have to use like dvorak and other things like that to estimate the intensity hurricane center could have called this a hurricane at 5 p.m i probably would have but um it is still struggling a little bit with some dry air but for the most part larry in a favorable environment just a little bit of dry air entrainment otherwise great outflow great water temperatures larry definitely going to continue to intensify hurricane center does bring this up to a major hurricane i believe in the 5 p.m. It was up to you have 120 miles an hour, so it well into category three intensity. No changes in the models in the short term. Five day models, uh, hurricane models, all in excellent agreement that that turn will begin well north of the Antilles. Hurricane Center's track shows that well and also has this thing up north of the Antilles by 5 p.m. on Monday. And what will be probably a large tropical cyclone. Larry's going to be a huge storm. I mean, it's going to be a big honking classic Cape Verde type hurricane and this will definitely be one to watch but um, the future is what we're really concerned about and Larry is going to pass near Bermuda. Bermuda sits at about 65 degrees west here on the map, so kind of circling it. You definitely see that most of the forecast tracks on both the European and GFS ensemble runs do fall somewhere east of Bermuda. A couple do track over. Now, this is still important because Larry, again, is going to be a very powerful storm. It's probably not going to be like a massively powerful storm. The environment looks a little more debatable, but you're probably going to get as a more stable, large hurricane. It'll probably undergo a couple eyeball replacements. It'll get big. It'll get stable, and then it won't be like 
a monster in terms of pure wind speeds, but it'll just be this big, massive hurricane, and it moves anywhere near Bermuda, it's going to give them some kind of impacts. The questions are how much. And Larry's is going to basically track around this high pressure ridge in the next several days. The high is strong right now. That's why Larry's moving west. Now towards the weekend, this weakens and it, the axis of the ridge shifts over some and this allows a bit of a weakness and this is what causes Larry to begin to turn to the north. And the high does begin to build back though by next week which forces this more north northwest path and this is what brings it close to bermuda now the question really is early to middle of next week so what we have here on the gfs is a trough coming in so you have a high here you have a trough coming in and you have this weakness between them that's what larry is seeking if this trough is weak or kind of behind on schedule larry could come further west the the, the weaker and later this trough gets here the more Larry is going to be inclined to move west as his high quickly rebuilds. This is the Bermuda Azores high in the Atlantic. It's going to keep rebuilding uh, when it when it goes down. So the, the solutions to this thing moving further west than it currently forecast are not off the table. And that's why Bermuda is an important checkpoint. If Larry goes too far west and we get a bit of an issue on our hands. Historically, this doesn't happen very often. Uh, Sam Lilo on Twitter posted a really nice graphic showing you all the major hurricanes that developed in this region and where they've gone after they formed and only a couple have really directly impacted the eastern north america i would say because uh louise 95 didn't impact newfoundland as a or uh, novus uh, no, newfoundland uh, nova scotia down here uh newfoundland as a strong uh tropical system and then these other two that hit the u.s directly were irma in 2017 florence 2018 now i believe irma was always kind of expected to sort of wander towards our region and we weren't really sure when it was going to turn or if it was going to but florence i remember explicitly looked like this where it was like oh yeah it's turning don't worry about it no big deal and then florence just she never did so I, um, I caution that when we're looking at this, we say, oh, well, here it is. Here's your trough at the middle of the end of next week, like seven, eight, nine days out. And it's just no big deal. It's just going to move in this weakness and out to sea. And, you know, on this model, yeah, it does. The trough grabs it and takes off with it. But, I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot for this trough to be a little bit weaker or a little bit behind schedule. This high to be a little bit stronger. Bottom line here, just keep watching it. We're going to see. Your other system tonight is this interest in the Caribbean Sea. A little bit of a weak low pressure forming this afternoon near the coast of Nicaragua. A uh, couple outflow boundaries in this region indicating a lot of dry air in the region and also being kind of pushed upon by this large upper trough over the western caribbean this is going to sort of lift out in the next couple days and it will improve wind shear in the region but it looks like dry air and generally unfavorable conditions in the western caribbean for the next several days so what you're going to have is this kind of mess of tropical moisture on one side with drier air on the north side and this whole sort of wave axis is just going to sort of move in this general direction this kind of just generally disturbed area of tropical moisture GFS shows this pretty well as we back it up here a little bit, and uh, we'll go to tomorrow morning, and again, you can see the mid-level moisture, there's just this broad sort of, you know, trough that's not really very sharp or very well organized, but a lot of tropical moisture pushes in towards the Yucatan towards the weekend and gets out into the Gulf of Mexico by early of next week so this is tuesday so again the same question we have with larry how's that trough look well it's going to be important for larry too gfs uh we go we're on thursday here notice the difference in these two models so i'll start with the european model this is uh, valid next thursday so a week from tomorrow the system would be festering somewhere in the southern gulf of mexico we think the european is a big strong trough this trough will push this system away it'll keep it pinned down there and also will pick off larry so that's what we're rooting for but if this trough is weaker and faster say gfs where the gfs trough's already over here it creates a weakness on the back side of the trough you're near as high as back out here towards the four corners in texas so you kind of got this steering flow that's trying to push something up in this region and uh, folks in the western Gulf of Mexico probably need to keep an eye on this next week if it's kind of festering. But again, we're, we're talking 7, 8, 9, 10 days out. So nothing big of an issue right now. Models not really pick them up on much. The European doesn't see anything for the system. While the GFS sees a fairly weak system staying near land with just like one or two ensembles trying to push out of there and develop something into a tropical system. I, I would imagine the wind shear will be pretty strong over this area. So nothing like Ida, nothing serious right now. But it is... Uh, it's not a complete non-starter, if that's the, the deal. Basically, this is the deal with both these storms. Is, is a, Yeah, Larry could be an issue, probably won't be. This could be an issue, probably won't be. And if they are, they're both going to be well down the road. So enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Enjoy all that. And we'll keep watching all this stuff for you. And we'll let you know if it's going to be an issue. But for right now, 
no big deal. So that's so what I got for you guys this evening. Keep an eye on the weather up in New England region tonight, guys. This uh, system is no joke. It's already, again, produced a lot of flooding, a lot of tornadoes, and this is going to continue until it moves offshore. And then we'll just be watching the tropics the next couple of days. But for right now, no major players on the horizon, thankfully. So we'll keep watching. Until then, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.